Hello and welcome to Code Your Own Data Selfie. I'm Craig, I'm a computer scientist, I'm a gadget geek, and I'm interested in all things tech. And you are about to get hands-on and combine art, maths, and code to create your own data-driven self-portrait. And hello, Daniel. Hello, Craig. Hello, everyone. I'm Daniel. I'm an engineer with a number addiction. We are here broadcasting to your classrooms today from our digital portrait gallery in Glasgow. This week is Maths Week Scotland, so happy Maths Week, everyone. The <laughs> happy theme... Maths Week. Happy Maths Week to you, Craig. The theme of Maths Week Scotland this year is beauty of maths. And in this workshop today, you're going to be combining maths with visual arts, computer science and data science. Yeah, today you're going to join our data science team to create a data-driven piece of digital art about the person that knows you best, you. And today we are joined by a whole network of creative technologists. That's you. And you are joining us from all over Scotland <laughs> and some of you from slightly further afield. Daniel, we've got loads of people joining today as well, so I think it's only appropriate we say hello to some people who are joining us. So we'll give you some different shout outs throughout the whole lesson. So if we don't get you just now, we'll try and get you later. But whenever we say the name of your school, please give us a big cheer in your class, nice and loud, so that Daniel and I can hear you from the Digital Portrait Gallery. So Daniel, here's some of the schools that are taking part today. So hello to Granton Grammar School. Thanks for taking part. Uh, Christ the King Primary School, thank you for taking part. Uh, Hurst Junior High School, hello to you. Hello to Hillside School, thank you for taking part. And St Charles's Primary, thanks for taking part today. We've got some more that we're going to give shout outs to. So a big hello to East Gold Penn Barras. Hello to St Michael's Primary School. Good morning to St Gabriel's Primary School. Downfield Primary School and Hawthornden Primary School. Now, there's a lot more of you than just these schools that we've mentioned here, Craig. We're going to have given shout outs to all of the schools taking part throughout the session today. If you are a teacher or an adult, you can tweet us with the hashtags MathsWeek, no, MathsWeek Scott, or you can follow us on Twitter too. It's data underscore schools. We are talking about data today. Well, what is data? Data is things that we can measure or things that we can count. So we might have things like weather data. What is the temperature in Rome this morning? What's the temperature of the digital portrait gallery that we're in? What's the wind speed up in Orkney? Or we might have things like traffic data or visitor numbers. So how many people are watching this live stream just now? How fast is the train moving? How many cars cross the Queensbury crossing in one day? How many likes can we get on this video, Daniel? We also have personal data, and that's numbers or information that is related to us as individuals. So maybe we should introduce ourselves using some personal data, Daniel. So my name's Craig, and yesterday I walked 12,567 steps. Okay, I'll introduce myself with some data too. My name's Daniel, I'm an engineer, and I have 386 different passwords. So interesting, Daniel. So these bits of personal data can maybe reveal a bit about our personalities. So, for example, Daniel, if you've got that many passwords, I'm guessing you like to be on the computer quite a lot. You have to use your computer a lot for work. Yeah, and you're dead right. I use my computer all day. I work on the computer. I use my computer in the evening as well. Craig, based on the data that you shared, I'm going to guess you had quite a busy day yesterday. You must have been working <laughs> in a few different places and you had to. Or maybe you went on a long walk. I'm not sure but I know that you did a lot of walking yesterday. Yeah. So how can we use that data, but in a creative way? Well, today we're gonna to make a specific type of art. We're gonna make self portraiture. So what is a selfie? Well, a selfie is just short for self portrait. And in art, a self portrait is any way that you want to express you. So you can use lots of different methods to make self portraits. You could have more traditional methods, so people would do paintings or photographs as well. But really, you can use any creative means you like. And today, you're going to be using some computer code. 
So yes, let's get started. We are really looking forward to seeing what you create today. So Craig, it might be that the classes taking part today have already made some selfies. Some of your teachers might have already done the activity with you. Or maybe you're going to code along live with us today. Or maybe you're just watching and you're going to make some later. But if you are going to be coding with us right now, we need to make sure that you are on the right page. So yeah, if you're, you're going to along... code with us right now, perfect, down below here, you're going to go to cyberskillslive.com and you're going to click start the live lesson. Now, you don't have to be coding along with us. It might be your class have already sent us your selfies. We've already had hundreds of them come in already. But if you want to play along, then you can go to cyberskillslive.com and click start the activity, start the live lesson, it says at the top. Then there'll be instructions on the screen. There's a little intro video as well. But it might be that you want to do it with your class later. So maybe just now you're just going to watch us. You're just going to see some examples of other selfies that people have made. And maybe you're going to code at some other point during maths week. But that's what people need to do to get started. Daniel, do you think, are we able to show people how to get started uh, making their first selfie? Yes, we can. So I'll share my screen and I'll show you how we get started making our very first data-driven self-portrait. Yeah, so here's what the activity looks like. This is the web page that you need to go to. And I'm going to show you how you get started with your first selfie. So we've got a bit of background information for you to read, but I'm going to skip down to the bit where you fill in a bit of information about who you are. So first name, I'm going to type in Daniel. And the school or group name, I'm going to type in Strathclyde because that's where I went to university. So. Rathclyde. Cool. We've got our first selfie here and here's the code for it. We've already written it for you. What you need to do is press play and that runs the code and you can see the selfie it generates on the right hand side. Underneath the selfie we've got some instructions for you to read and follow. I'm going to let you do that yourself and once you've finished we've got a button that says send your selfie. When you press that that will send your selfie to us so we can look at it in our virtual portrait gallery. So don't worry if you have just joined us, we're just getting started. So keep following instructions on that page to complete and customize and create your very first data selfie. Daniel, people have already started joining us. Some people say, is this, is this actually live? Yes. Well, I can tell you that St. Gabriel's School are ready to code now. They're on they're tweeting us on Twitter. Lone Head Primary are also learn, looking forward to learning more about numbers and code today. And also Victoria Primary in Edinburgh have been watching along as well. So thank you everyone for taking part as well. Daniel, thanks for showing us how to make that first uh, self-portrait. Now, you know, self-portraits, these are bit, these are abstract ones. Like they don't look like any selfie I've ever taken. But remember, a self-portrait can doesn't need to be, you know, a, a representation of how you actually look in real life. It can be abstract. And we're going to be using a creative coding tool to create our portraits today. Yeah, so rather than using paint or pencils, you're going to be using computer code. And you're going to be using something called P5.js. And P5.js is like a digital sketchbook. You write some code and that code makes marks on the canvas. That's the bit on the right hand side. And each of the marks that are made by your code are going to represent something significant to you. So it might represent the year that you were born or it might represent your favorite hobby or maybe even the color of your hair, eyes or socks. These lines <laughs> might be these, these marks. They might be lines. They might be shapes. They might be patterns but they don't have to look like the thing they represent. I think that's important, Craig. These selfies, they're still representing you, but they might not be a direct representation of you. They could yeah, be it's not going to look like your face. <laughs> like if you, if you just took a selfie with your camera, you know, it might just look like the way you look, but this is a chance that you can show off some of your personalities, your hobbies, and other bits of data that you might not see just by looking at someone as well. So Craig, the tool we're using, I said it was called P5.js, but why are we using P5.js? What's so good about it? Well, P5.js is a really good tool because it's aimed at creative people like you or I. It's put into a friendly language, so it's got lots of common words that we use to describe creative actions. So you'll see some words in the code like draw or color or rectangle. 
Uh, Daniel, I can tell a lot of people are already creating their first selfie as well. So once you've finished making that first selfie as well, make sure you hit the button that says send your selfie towards the bottom. That will send us a copy of your image. It won't send us your code. It won't send us any of your information. It will just send us that picture, the selfie that you've created. And we can then add that into our, our National Portrait Gallery, Daniel, our Digital Portrait Gallery. So any, sub, any selfies that you submit today, anyone who goes to the gallery, when we upload it, we'll be able to see your selfies and we'll make sure all your teachers get the link as well. Craig, I can tell you quite a few people have been submitting selfies already. I can see here that Black Man in Primary School, your class has been really busy already this morning. You've all been submitting selfies. St. Michael's, Lone Head, Turnbull, Craig, there's loads of schools that have been submitting the selfies. I think we'll take a look at no a few of them in a couple of minutes' time. But before we go to that gallery, we have another guest. It's not just me and Craig here today. We've also got Kate joining us on the stream. So let's meet Kate. Kate is a computing science teacher who works with the Data Education in Schools project, which is based at the University of Edinburgh. Hello, Kate. How are you this morning? I'm good, thanks. I can't wait to see some selfies. Looking forward to it. <laughs> so Kate, we're going to be speaking to you about data science and what you do shortly. But for now, I know you've already said you're keen to see these selfies. Do you want to go to the gallery and we'll, we'll take a look at them? Absolutely. Brilliant. So let's take a look at a few selfies that we've had submitted. What? That, Daniel, what a wonderful yeah. gallery you've prepared for us here. Yeah. Look at this. I know. See, they're over here, aren't they? <laughs> so this is our first data selfie. This has been submitted by Charlotte and Charlotte is at Douglas Academy. So I'm loving the colours. I'm loving the colours. And these colours actually represent things about Charlotte. So, for example, I'm looking at the circle in the middle here, right? And I can see it's a kind of like a light brown colour. Okay. So I know that that means that Charlotte has brown eyes. That's a piece of data that Charlotte's encoded oh. in her data selfie. Craig. It's like a maroon colour. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. And I know that the circle that comes around that, that's to do with the colour of your socks, isn't it? So, Charlotte, you're wearing a um, sort of lilac or uh, dark purple socks today as well. Tell you what, Daniel, this is not a very colourblind friendly selfie. <laughs> it's hard to tell the difference between some of these colours on my screen here. But this is great, Charlotte, as well. Let's take a look at another one. So, this one here. This one here is from Alice, who is at St. Michael's School. And I can see here, Alice, you have black socks on this morning. And I see here, there's some other bits of data at the top, Kate. So I can see here that, that Alice is age 11 and the circle's a bit smaller in the middle. Kate, did you notice anything else about the size of the circles? This one seems a bit smaller. It maybe represents something else. So is that her height? It is her height. So ah. what we can tell here is that Alice is slightly less tall than Charlotte would be. So we can see that the two selfies side by side. We can tell a bit more information about them. Let's take a look at a couple more. Fantastic. So this one here, this one's from Beth, who's at Cornbank St. James Primary. And this is a really nice colour palette that, that Beth's chosen. Yeah, pink, pink eyes, <laughs> it seems like. <laughs> and white socks as well and the background colour so am I right in thinking Daniel that when people customise this selfie they get to choose their favourite colour as their background colour so this yeah. looks like a, a, pale, a pale blue is Beth's favourite colour as well thank you very much for sending us your selfie Beth yeah that's right there's a line in the code so next to like my socks or my eyes there's one that says BG colour and a few of you have been asking what is BG colour try changing it and see what happens Maybe that's how Beth's managed to change the background colour. Try putting in your favourite colour and see what happens and then send your selfie. Maybe it'll appear here in 30 seconds time. Okay, I think we've got time for a couple more. <laughs> this one here. This one here is from Isaac, who is at Musselborough for a primary. Now, Brilliant. this one's got an extra blue circle around it. Hmm. Yeah, I, I know what that represents. So. Kate, let me tell you something about this, right? Okay, so in the middle, you've got the eyes. Then you've okay. got the next circle, which represents your height. So that's Isaac's height. 
The circle around that represents the height of Harry Styles, okay? <laughs> so what, what does this tell you about um, Isaac compared to Harry Styles? Who all, I mean, this, this is kind of like Harry Styles photobombing Isaac's selfie here. Um, what, what can you tell us about this piece of data? So I'm thinking the red circle is smaller than the blue line. So I'm thinking that uh, Isaac is not as tall as Harry Styles. Yes. <laughs> now we're just having a bit of fun here, Kate, but is it not true that like, you know, you do use data visualization to compare different values? I mean, like the fact that you could just look at that and tell instantly, you didn't have to know what the numbers are. That's probably a good reason why people might use this more professionally. Absolutely, yes. Um, so uh, it, it's quite difficult to uh, understand numbers just at, just seeing lots of numbers. Um, so spreadsheets are full of numbers, but our brains can't understand those. So when we look at numbers in charts and graphs, it's much easier for us to spot patterns like seeing differences in heights there. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I can imagine like placing these selfies next to each other, you know, you could quite clearly get an idea of the, the range of different heights of people in the class. You could line them up by the colour of their socks that they're wearing as well, you know, it'd be a really visual way to sort of show some of that information. Absolutely, you could look at whole class worth, worth and uh, see who has matching socks. Yeah, that, that'd be quite good when we, when we put them into our digital gallery, Daniel, we can have them ordered by sock colour or something like that, maybe. <laughs> Okay, wait, let's let's bring up one more um, for now. Okay. So this one, like, so, I'm so, trying something's to, already quite yeah, striking so here. Like, we bring up the last one, right? So we've got the circles. Okay. So look at the size of the middle circle there, right? And then move okay. to this one here. That middle circle is much bigger this time. So this one here is from uh -huh. Mr. Cross, and Mr. Cross works at Kings Park Primary School. So if the outside the... circle represents her heights. The inside circle represents our ages. So oh the younger we are, the smaller that circle in the middle, and the older we are, the, the larger that circle in the middle. So I'm going to guess that Mr. Cross is actually a teacher rather than a pupil. <laughs> ah, okay, that makes sense, yeah. Or a very old pupil, maybe. I don't see a Harry Styles circle, so I'm guessing that Mr. Cross is taller than Harry Styles. Would I be right? That could be right. Uh, right, either Kate. that or Harry Styles code hasn't been added into this, so uh, I, I think you're right though. I think uh, you've eclipsed, Mr. Cross has eclipsed Harry Styles in terms of height. <laughs> these are great, thank you for sending them in. <laughs> uh, it's brilliant. We're, Daniel, we're getting hundreds of these sent in at the moment as well, and it's fantastic. I don't think we're going to be able to show them all right now, but if we haven't given you a shout out yet, there are plenty more selfies for you to be working on. And we'll put all these into our Maths Week Scotland digital portrait gallery as well. Yes. So the selfies that you submit today or you submit even this week, we are going to, at the end of the month, we're going to put all of the selfies submitted into our digital portrait gallery. So we'll share the link with your teachers later on and you'll be able to check them out later on and see if you can find your selfie in the gallery. But let's move on. Let's move on to activity number two. So let's visualize some more data about you. And this time, what we're going to do is we're going to make a data visualization, which represents a typical day in your life. So this, this data selfie is going to look a bit like a barcode. And a barcode is another way that we can, we can store or present data. So what I'd like you to do, if you are coding along, scroll or move down the page until you see activity two. You'll see another code editor ready for you to hit play and mess around with. So what I'd like you to do is press play on that code, run the code, and then follow the instructions underneath it to create your next selfie. And just like before, once you're finished, you can hit send your selfie. It will submit it to us and we'll take a look at some in our gallery. Yeah, we'll give you a few minutes to work on that now. You're going to be working through activity two. So as Daniel said, it's the one that's called a day in the life. You're going to keep following the instructions. The instructions are below the selfie. And then once you're happy with it, you can send it to us and submit it to our gallery. Kate, let's bring Kate back for another chat here. Hi. Hello, Kate. You're still here, don't worry. We'll, we'll go back to the gallery soon. Kate, we had a wee bit of a chat about it earlier, but 
We spoke a bit more about visualising data and the tools and ways that we can do that. Is it more than just creating a bar graph in Excel? Absolutely. So um, numbers are really important, but they're very difficult to understand. But our eyes can see differences between shapes and colours and different widths of lines. But we find it really difficult to scan across lots of numbers and figure out what's happening without making it visual. So visualising data lets us kind of predict the future by seeing trends. Um, so we can uh, look at the popularity of an artist in Spotify going up in one part of the country or seeing the sales of chocolate go down in, in one supermarket but not the others. Uh, so turning data into something visual lets us compare data, like comparing the selfies that we looked at earlier, comparing selfies across your class to see what you have in common with other people and what's different. Well, that's a good point because like for this day in the life one, what people do on a Saturday might vary depending on what your hobbies and what your interests are. So it'd be nice to sort of compare, are there some people who get up early and go and do something active like swimming? Or are there people who like, you know, relaxing on a Saturday or maybe they go shopping or maybe they, they read or something like that. So that would be an interesting way that we can compare as well. Or maybe you'll find a friend in the class that you hadn't spoken to about a particular hobby and be able to chat yeah. more about a hobby. That's brilliant. Let's say hello to some more people who have um, joined us today as well. So when I say your school, again, give us a nice cheer in your class, nice and loud. So um, some more schools that have joined us today. So I can see that we've got St Andrew's Fox, St Andrew's Fox Covert. Thank you for joining us. Up Hall Primary School. Thanks for joining us again. We've got Kings Park Primary School. We've got Garlock Head Primary School. And we've got Donotter Primary School. Well, right across the country today, lots of people joining us for Math Suite Scotland. Thank you very much for taking part. Now, I know that, um, Daniel, before we go to our gallery next, like we're on YouTube here, we should take we should take a moment here to tell everyone to make sure that you're if you're enjoying today's video, then you can like the video to let people know that you've enjoyed it. You can also subscribe to our channel to make sure that you get more videos like this as well. Was that said like a proper YouTuber, Kate? Did I, did I come across <laughs> there as? Absolutely. Like and subscribe. <laughs> Do you know what, Craig? I think those shout-outs that I gave out um, must have been clipped by YouTube, so I'm going to give them that again. <laughs> so, no problem. just to make sure that you all have a chance I can't to... believe you've been censored, Daniel, by YouTube for giving a shout-out. I think it was probably by myself, though. So, <laughs> let's give a shout-out to other five schools. So, we've got Lone Head Primary School joining us. Thank you for sending your selfies. I've been saying you've been sending quite a lot in today already. Um, a big hello to St Anne's Primary School. I can see you're tuning in to Turnbull High School. Thanks for joining. Our Ladies RC Primary. Hello, good morning. And also Lockside Primary School. I can see you are taking part as well. So we've got a few more schools that we haven't shouted out yet. We'll maybe give you some shout outs before we get to the end of the session. Craig, we've also got uh, like a, a sort of an introductory video that kind of yeah. sums up what it is we're doing today. So I think to give you a couple more minutes to work on your selfies, I think we could cut to that video just now. Okay. What is a self-portrait? It's a representation of you. When we make a self-portrait, we choose what we want to show of ourselves. It could be a pencil drawing, a still photograph, or any form of visual expression of yourself. Many self-portraits are realistic visual representations. They look like us. We can also have abstract self-portraits. An abstract self-portrait isn't necessarily how you look in real life. Instead, it might use shapes, colours and forms to represent you. This is what we're going to do today. Create an abstract self-portrait of ourselves through data. 
we will use code to draw a self-portrait using personal data. We'll use data visualisation software to paint an abstract drawing based on personal data you choose to share. Rather than using paint or pencils, you'll use computer code. You write the code and it makes marks on the canvas. These marks might be lines, shapes or patterns. Let's get started on our data creating abstract self-portraits. How do I look? Thank you everyone who's submitted your selfies so far. We'll go and have a look at some of them in the, the gallery shortly. I know that there's a couple of schools who've had trouble connecting to the website. Maybe it's blocked on your school network or it's not loading on your computers. Don't worry, all the resources will be available at another point. So maybe what you can do just now is watch the video, see how we're making the selfies, be inspired to create your own as well. And you can join it later on in the week as well. So don't worry, you can still take part in it just now, even if you're not coding along with us. To be fair, I wouldn't want to be coding along at the exact same time as I'm watching the video as well. Daniel, how are we doing here? How are we doing? Oh, we've, had, you know... we've had a few more shout outs and stuff as well. So thank we you have... for those. So I can see here we've had about 200 selfies submitted. So I think let's go to the gallery and let's take a look at maybe five or six of them just now. <laughs> And the rest of them we're, will have we're to We're going to need there. a bigger curation team, <laughs> Daniel, <know>. with 200. <laughs> <laughs> so let's head back to the gallery. So here we have a selfie. And this is what this second selfie looks like. And this one has come from Ailsa, who's at Hawthorndon Primary School. Hello, Ailsa. So this selfie here, it has different bars. And uh, these different bars represent different activities that we might do in a typical day. So different people's bars might look slightly different and there might be different widths. And the wider a bar is, the more time you spend on that activity in a particular day. So Craig, I'm looking at Elsa's one here and it looks like the blue bar at the left hand side is the widest one. So Craig, what activity does Elsa do the most on a Saturday? It looks like a lot of sleeping a on a sleeping. Saturday. <laughs> yeah, get a good lie in, why not? Enjoy that. Hey, can you see any other activities that Ilsa does on a Saturday? Looks like she does a little bit of running around or, <laughs> yes. or moving. <laughs> yeah, I like that idea of sleep for eight hours, 15 minute run and then watch television. Brilliant. By the looks of it. <laughs> and, and lots of shrugging. <laughs> yeah. What, what do you interpret that to mean? How do you read that? What would you say? Is that perhaps whatever? Kind yeah. of just other stuff. That's, that's, I kind of get that feeling there's a bit of unpredictableness, like, oh, I'll just do whatever I want on a Saturday. So Thank you, Ilsa. Whatever. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at another one. This one here is from Harris, and Harris is at St. Michael's Primary School. So it looks like Harris gets a bit less sleep than Ilsa, although this is a Wednesday, I've noticed. So Ilsa's was about a Saturday. Oh, yeah. Harris has, decide, has decided to share what their schedule looks like on a Wednesday. So we've got a yellow column this time and that yellow column has books in it. Now, Kate, what do you think these books might represent here? I suppose it could be reading, but it might be schoolwork generally. Or homework? Yeah. Yeah, or we, we don't know if it's a specific class or if it's just like representing that. And I suppose that's true when you look at any data visualization or data set, sometimes you might have to sort of interpret or analyze the data i mean a day spending six hours reading would be amazing that, that's so my sorry. ideal wednesday <laughs> I, I wonder if the, maybe you've got like a, a running club at the school on the afternoon on a wednesday or you do pe because that that looks like a significant amount of time like doing running as well so i get the feeling that you know that means that you've got a club on that day or there's you know, you, you take part in a competition on Wednesdays or something. That that stands out to me as spending a lot of time being active or running. That orange bar is bigger than the sleep bar, though. I'm a bit worried about Harris. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe take it easier, <laughs> Harris. <laughs> yeah. And the one at the end, Daniel, what's happening there? What's happening there? So it looks like, so the, the kind of the, the shrug at the end, it looks like Harris doesn't have any of that. So it's been kind of like squished into the side and the TV has filled uh, the void of that. 
So it looks like Harris has a very active day that's that's totally kind of like set in stone. Harris's activities you, can be so like the the, the shrug is so small because it's like look I don't have time to do like <laughs> anything else. Like I think so. I've got my running lined up. I've got my books. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you, Harris. Thanks for sending us that. Thank you. So. This one here, this one, do you know what, this one's also from Muscle Bora Bora Primary School. This one is from Emma and Rishi. So you are working together to create this one. So I'm not sure, maybe this one's for Emma, maybe this is for Rishi, Rishi or maybe this is actually a bit of a combination of both of your weddings. I think they worked on it together when we were in, we, we met this class, Daniel, and I remember them working on this together. So maybe it was a negotiation between what they would, would normally be, do between them on a Wednesday. So this one's a bit more so balanced, I, I would say, than than the last mm -hmm. two. A lot less um, active time. That orange bar is a wee bit narrower. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I think the yellow must represent school or learning, perhaps in this case, especially if it's a Wednesday, when it is a school day. So, um, but we've got a bit more of that shrug time at the end. Maybe that's because it was two people working on this selfie. Maybe that's where the disagreement came. Yeah, unsure. Unsure. Thank you, Emma. But just by changing some of those numbers, Daniel, as well, like, it is really clear. Like we're looking at these immediately and we can see the difference in time people spend sleeping or working or doing the activities. Here comes another one. This one is from Lily and Lily is at Cornbank St. James's Primary School. Mm -hmm. And Lily has decided to make their selfie about a typical Saturday. Oh. So, again, a bit of activity going on here, Daniel. I look, interestingly, on this Saturday, Lily still makes time to maybe read books or, or mm -hmm. do a bit of studying, maybe doing your homework, maybe on a Saturday as well. Yeah. That's what that looks like to me. Saturday must be, must be a bit of time to do some, some extra homework. Right, thank you, Lily. And we've got one more we're going to take a look at just now. And this one's from Aidan at Cornbank St. James Primary School. And this is another one about a Saturday. Now, this is a balance today, I suppose. It's balanced between sleeping and exercise. Yeah. <laughs> when I'm not sleeping, I'm running. <laughs> Do you know what this is? This is, if my dog could create a data selfie, it would look something like this. It's, <laughs> it's either sleep right there or it's running circles around the room. So, maybe, maybe Eden has a dog and needs to, to walk the, the dog. Perhaps. Now the bar at the, the side there, Daniel, the purple one, it isn't labelled. Is that sort of, um, do we know what that is? I suppose we can't, it hasn't been labelled, so we, we, we don't really know, but something is going on there as well. Um, a bit of a an incomplete data set maybe, Kate, or some, something that we need to look in more detail? Perhaps, and missing values in data sets can be quite a problem, actually. So it's the same colour as the TV bar, but maybe TV didn't quite fit in with what Aidan was doing on a Saturday. So maybe he was going to change it. We need to clean that data then. We need to Absolutely. get someone to go in there and <laughs> investigate it. Oh, these are brilliant. Thank you yeah, very much are. for sending I'm, your selfies. I can see loads of you are sending them, so like... We haven't managed to feature all of these, but I can see your Indy at Lockside. You've sent a really good one in. Amelia at Lone Head. Robbie at Clack Manon School. Um, Eliza, who's at Hillside. Um, Ciara at St Anne's Primary. Her at Turnbull Academy. Logan at Gearluck Head Primary. We've had tons of really good data selfies <laughs> submitted for this second selfie. So thank you very much for submitting them. And we look forward to actually browsing through these ourselves. Bit later on. Daniel, we've got time for one more. We've got time for one more. One more selfie. So I think because we've only got time to do one more selfie, I think we should go to the big one. I think we should go to the big finale selfie. So we're going to make one more selfie, but I think we should do activity number five, okay? So what I'd like you to do now is if you're coding along, scroll all the way down the page to activity five. So we're going to skip three and four. You could always come back to them later with your teacher. Um, but for now, let's talk about activity five. So this is your chance to make one more selfie before we finish up today. And again, we've got another code editor that you can play around with and the instructions are just underneath it. So this time you're going to have to change a few more lines of code. This one contains a lot more personal data. So code your data selfie and then send it to us 
when you're ready. This one is a bit bigger than the last ones. There's more data to be added to the code. So I'd recommend maybe just making one change at a time and then hitting play and then changing it again and then run the code just to make sure that you don't break anything. But if you do find it does break or something doesn't work quite right, there's an undo button and there's also a reset button which will put your code back to how it was the last time it worked. Sometimes when I'm using that activity, Daniel, I have to hit that reset button. So I've typed in, I've made a change to the code and it's not working, it's not displaying on the screen. You can just hit that reset button. It will put all the, the code back to the way it was at the start and you can just start again. And sometimes that's the best way to fix it rather than trying to debug it at that point as well. Let's give people a couple of more minutes to work on that big data selfie as well. And that, I just want to shout out a few more schools we've maybe not had the chance to say hello to yet. Thank you for joining us, uh, Roslyn Primary School. Uh, Cornbank Primary School, Victoria Primary School, and also we've had people from Woodmill, Woodmill High School and Newton Primary School as well. Daniel, there's more and more people joining us every time we do this. This is great. There is. Um, I have a few more too. Um, hello to Guard Bridge Primary School, Harry Primary School, Black Manning Primary School, Birth Primary School, and also a big shout out to Musselboro, Borough Primary School. Now we actually did this activity with you in person. We had tons of really, really great selfies created. Um, so a big hello, uh, nice to see you again um, for for the data selfies activity. Yeah, they, they, get, they just have to watch us on the screen this time, Daniel. They don't get to see us face to face. <laughs> so um, let's bring Kate back into the, the stream before we go to the, the gallery. We'll give you a few more minutes to to modify these last selfies. I can see a few of you have been submitting them already. Finley, Indy, Riley, Jalen, Declan, uh, Talia, Kelsey, Yara, brilliant work. Thank you for sending these already. You don't have to rush, you can take your time. Um, even if you don't submit it just now and you submit it later, we will still get it. We'll still put them in that portrait gallery. So make sure you, you, you edit all the different lines and all the bits of data before you send it. Yeah, don't, don't rush, don't, don't rush, rush it. You can't Neither. rush, good, good self-portrait. Let's bring back Kate. Hi. Hello, so, Kate. Hello, Kate. So, Kate, at the start, we said you were part of the data education in schools team. What is data education in schools and how can teachers and educators get involved with what you do? Well, we help schools teach about data and information handling all across the curriculum. So we have resources and activities for teaching about beautiful data and art or measuring physical activity with data fit or using data to count food miles or solving problems like plastic rubbish in the playgrounds or in the oceans. We also support schools and colleges that are teaching the National Progression Award in data science. We think it's the first data science qualification for school pupils in the whole world. Um, and also get in touch if you would like us to come to your school and run a professional learning session in your cluster or your, your school. And we also have university students who can come and visit your school and do a workshop with your learners on using the new microbit computers that should have been sent to your schools on how to solve problems with data and coding using these little computers. Brilliant. So it sounds like, is it maths week every week for the data education in schools team? I guess you get to deal with a lot of Absolutely. numbers. and. <laughs> and it's the type of thing that, you know, when people think about, you know, what skills we need in the future, we're going to need more people who can understand numbers and how to work with data as well. And we're using them in a creative way just now, but actually it's going to be really important um, for lots of different jobs. Yeah, it's a really important skill for all different types of jobs. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for joining us, Kate, because it's brilliant to have someone else joining us and, and it going into the, the gallery with us. I mean, it's a shame we don't have little, like, you know, glasses of apple juice or something. We can just sit <laughs> while we look at these lovely portraits and um, little finger food. But may maybe maybe next year we can organise that. But for now, we'll have to deal with Daniel's um, metaverse gallery he's created for us. <laughs> so, speaking of the gallery, we've had loads of really interesting selfies submitted. So, this one here. Wow. <laughs> yeah, wow. There's lots going on in it. It's a really, it's a really nice picture. This one here has come from 
uh, Shanice and Bianca who are at Muscle Bora Bora Primary School. So you worked on this one together. There's a lot of data inside, There's a lot of information in, inside in this here. selfie. So I think we I think we maybe bring up five or six different selfies. Maybe we pick up one or two bits of data about them each okay. so that we can get through more of them because we could spend ten minutes speaking about just just this one, I suspect. But let's Well let let me pick out one bit mm -hmm. that I recognised here because Janice and Bianca have worked on this together. So they maybe have combined a couple of bits of their own data together. So see the thing that looks like a like a flower, like the pink flower that you can see there with the petals on it. So I know that the way that that is drawn, the number of petals represents the number of letters in your first name. So how many petals are on that flower, Daniel? There are seven petals on that flower. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that to me means, so if it's Chinese and Bianca, Chinese must be, it must be her name because C-H-E-N, C-H-E-N-I-S-E, -S -S -E, seven, yes. Thank goodness I was able to count to seven there as part of Maths Week. That would have been a disaster if I hadn't been able to count correctly. <laughs> so that's that's a piece of data that I've picked from that one. So yeah, I like so the, I think the this cartwheeling is... in the top corner is quite good. Oh yeah. Yeah. I wonder so what that's the, for. The, these that so that emoji there, I can tell you, Kate, that is their favourite hobby. Ah. Cool. So. I'm going to guess maybe gymnastics. Gymnastics, maybe. Maybe Chinese's yeah. yeah. um, favourite hobby. Brown, thank you very much for this one. Let's take a look at another one. This one here is coming from Ewan. And Ewan is at Ockham Harvey Academy. Okay. And I can see here, we're well, looking at the emoji in the top left, there's a Formula One car. So I'm going to guess Ewan's maybe into motor racing or, or F1. Maybe he's a racer, yeah, exactly. This is like, this is like quite time. vivid as well, isn't it? Mm. Quite a, you know, it, it stands out as well. Um, anything, Kate, you want to draw attention to, we can help decode it for you, or you can... I'm wondering what the triangle and the circle are for. So there was lots more triangles in the last one. Yeah. With Shanice so the, and... So yeah. at the bottom left, you can see a triangle and a circle. And I can tell you that those represent the number of siblings you have in your family. So there's two there, which means that Ewan has like one one themselves and then the other sibling as well. And because it's the circle at the bottom, that means Ewan's the youngest. So Ewan has an older sibling. That's Wonderful. what that means. Cool. Yeah. Whereas in the previous one, I think there was there was more siblings, maybe. Yeah. Yes. Cool. <laughs> there were three still the older youngest. siblings in this one. But still. So whether they both added their siblings together. That could be it could know. be the sum total. <laughs> right. This is Thank great, Ewan, as well. Uh, let's take a look at another one. This one is from Jake. Jake is at Blackstone Valley Regional Vocational Technical High School. Uh, this is a selfie that Jake has submitted. So I'm going to pick out a piece of information in this one and I'm going to talk about these bars at the very bottom you can see like some vertical lines they're kind of coming almost all the way to halfway out so that's how long Jake can hold his breath for so those lines I'm going to guess Jake can hold his breath for about 40 to 45 seconds because wow. if you can hold your breath for 100 seconds those bars go all the way across the bottom and if you can hold your breath for like uh, 50 seconds, it'll be halfway, 25 or 40 of the way, so I'm going to guess because we're about 40% of the way over, Jake can hold his breath for about 40 seconds. Brilliant. And those circles in the middle, Daniel, they're much bigger than the other circles. Jake is definitely older. Jake's at high school, so he's going to be older than some of the people who were at primary, and that's why those circles are bigger. Oh, you don't get this information in just a, a, a camera selfie, do you? You know? <laughs> what else have we got? What else we got? So this one here is from Victoria, and Victoria is at St Michael's Primary School. Oh, wow. Now, Craig, you were saying that the circle is a bit bigger in Jake's mm -hmm. one. Victoria's mm -hmm. circle is bigger again in this one. So I'm going to guess Victoria is older than Jake, mm -hmm. who is older than Ewan was. <laughs> so when we put Do all these selfies Victoria... side by side, we can kind of get a picture of 
of the age range. Do you think Victoria is a teacher part. then? I think Victoria might be Because, I mean, that's pretty big. That's pretty big for a primary school age. Um, either that or maybe it, it could also be, and Kate, this probably happens in real life, maybe the data has been mistyped or collected incorrectly and it's not really representing the person's age correctly, maybe? Maybe. We, we don't know. There, I mean, um, it's not so big that it, it's gone off the, the screen, so it's still plausible. Yeah. It might be yeah. uh, an older uh, kid or a helper uh, or an adult. Um, yeah. They can also hold their breath for quite a long time as well. That's true, so. that's true. So maybe they've got more practice at that. <laughs> <laughs> so I can see here that um, Victoria's favourite hobby at the top left is I would guess art or painting, something like that as well. And the animal below the, the sort of little cat, that's that's basically how you see yourself as an animal. So Victoria sees herself as a cat, a smiling cat. That's nice. Fab. These what? are brilliant. They are. What, does the owl, what does the owl mean? What does the owl mean? Mm. So the owl, so, so this one has an owl. A lot of the other ones we've seen have had suns. So people either put a sun emoji or an oh. owl emoji here, and it represents whether they feel like they're more of a morning person or they're more of an evening person. So right. I'm going to guess Victoria is more of a night owl. Oh, <laughs> or Victoria has decided to describe themselves as more of a night owl. I think we've got time for two more selfies. So okay, let's do it. Let's, let's go through these ones a bit more quickly. So this one here is from Lindsay. Lindsay is at Hornbank St James's Primary. Um, so I think another night one, owl. Another night owl. The circles are quite big, but both circles are quite large. So I'm going to guess Lindsay's quite tall. <laughs> yep. Uh huh. That's cool. But can't can't hold her breath quite as long as some people, <laughs> and. The blue band that I'm seeing at the top right, that tells me that Lindsay's would describe herself more as an introvert rather than an extrovert. So that's that's standing out to me as well. Kate, how many siblings does, uh, does Lindsay have? It looks like uh, one sibling, but they're the youngest. Correct, correct. Listen, the, we're, we're getting pretty good at this. This almost feels like, you know, tea leaf reading or something doesn't it but it is all based like this is based on the data that's been put into it that we can see as well is this another one this Daniel? is another one so let's make this our last one for now but like i said we have had loads and loads and loads of data selfies submitted so thank you erin grace finley lauren lewis reese kayla ellie abby campbell daniel there are so many selfies that have been submitted sorry we don't have time to show them all just now um this last one we're going to look at here this one is from lacy lacy is also at muscleborough borough primary we haven't really spoken so much about the color palettes this one's quite yeah. autumnal which seems appropriate with what it looks like out my window just now we've got lots of like greens and oranges and yellows and nice warm colors now that's not a coincidence that the the colors are autumnal those autumnal colours mean that Lacey was born in autumn. So Lacey's birthday has maybe been quite recently, or maybe it's going to be quite soon. So Lacey was born in the autumn. Brilliant. This is cool. great. Daniel, this has been so fun, being able to look at people's selfies. Thank you everyone who's already sent us in a selfie, or if your class have hopefully now been inspired and at some other point during Maths Week Scotland, you can go and create your own selfie and submit it to our gallery for us to display as well. Kate, it's been great having you here as well to, to help decode and sort of un basically appreciate these creative works that people have been creating. Thank you so much, it's been great fun. So, shall we, uh, I think we should wrap some things up for now, Daniel? Yes, so let's wrap things up. So at the very bottom of the page, there is a short uh, feedback form. It'd be great if you could fill that in and let us know how you found taking part in the activity today. We have had hundreds and hundreds of data selfies submitted, which is brilliant. I can see loads of you have been taking part and we've got some really interesting and creative ones. There's some really fun ones that I wanted to show, but we haven't quite had time. So. I'm looking forward to seeing them uh, in the gallery as well. There's also some links at the bottom of the webpage where you can find out more about us and other sessions that we've got. We've got over 20 different activities on our website. 
So if you fancy saving the rhino with data science, or you'd like to find out more about renewable energy, we've got activities which cover those topics as well. So the website for those is cyberskillslive.com and you'll see them all written there. But for now, let's thank Kate for being on the stream. It was really interesting hearing from you. I'd like to take part, thanks you for, thank you for also critiquing these brilliant pieces of art. <laughs> and it's been us. great fun, thank you. Great, thanks Kate. And Thank you, uh, you, for all taking part, our massive network of creative technologists. You've all learned a bit of JavaScript today, but you've also learned a bit more about representing data and also a bit more about uh, generative art as well. I think it's fair to say, Daniel, we really have explored the beauty of maths and sort of seen how numbers can be related to things that we care about and then used to create um, these amazing digital self-portraits. If you've enjoyed today's video, then you can like it, you can subscribe to us for more of these live lessons in the future, and we hope you enjoy the rest of Maths Week Scotland. But for now, it's bye from Kate. Bye. It's bye from Craig. Bye-bye. And it's bye from me as well. See you next time. <laughs>